What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to talk about a topic that I've been seeing float around quite a bit, especially with the proposed M1 Garand nerf that we heard about last week. And this topic is, should Call of Duty developers be listening to pro players more so than the rest of the community when it comes to balancing decisions in the game? Before we get into the topic, this is a sponsored video. Once again, I'm working with World Gaming here. They have the Canadian series that's going on right now, and it's free to enter for anybody that lives in the US or Canada. The prize pool for this is $60,000, and the first place team is taking home $25,000, which is great for a free to enter tournament. Currently, they're in the process of the online qualifiers. I will leave a link down below. Once you get through qualifiers, we have the online playoffs, and then once the online playoffs are done, the top eight teams will actually be flown out to Toronto for the final, and this is where you're competing for the big money. So if you guys are interested in more details or to sign your team up for free, I will leave a link down below. So getting into the topic of should developers be listening to pro players when it comes to balancing changes? My short answer to this is sometimes, but let me elaborate on that a little bit. Now, so far with Call of Duty World War II, we've seen a few weapon balancing changes that have gone through. Some of these are clearly beneficial to the entire community. Whether you're a pro player or a public match player, they were good changes. I'm just thinking back to the FG42 raid at launch as well as the BAR raid at launch. Those two guns were just clearly the best, and I think the majority of pro players and public match players alike agreed that there needed to be a little bit of balancing there. However, there are some situations where it's clear that the developers are catering to the pros and the changes they're making don't really make sense for public matches. One example of this is when they recently pretty much destroyed the fire rate of the FG42 coming right off of CWL Dallas where basically every pro was using the FG42. That seemed like a clear response to that event and the fact that they wanted to see more variety in competitive play and it didn't really seem like that stemmed at all from public matches or the general community. At that point in the game's life cycle, I wasn't really seeing too many complaints about the FG42. It was one of the better rifles in the game, but it wasn't so amazing. It wasn't completely plaguing public matches by any means. So that one seemed to be a clear response to pros. Also, the machine pistol nerf that happened a little while ago. I don't remember really seeing any complaints about the machine pistol. If I ever died to a machine pistol, I wasn't thinking, oh god, he pulled that overpowered machine pistol out. It was more so just another pistol in the game, but for competitive play, that was kind of breaking the meta a little bit because that allowed players to use a rifle while basically having a mini SMG in their pocket, which made SMG use basically just go out the window. So that was another change that was pretty much clearly for competitive. Now we're looking at a potential nerf to the M1 Garand as well as maybe a buff to the STG44, and a lot of us public match players are really scratching our heads on this one because it seems like this is clearly catering to the pros and them trying to design it around competitive play. I have never heard a complaint about the M1 Garand in public matches, and I almost never see the M1 Garand in public matches because it's a high risk, high reward, and a high skilled weapon that has a ton of trade-offs for that powerful time to kill. The average player out there does much better and would much rather use a full auto like the STG for instance. The STG is one of the most versatile, one of the most easy to use weapons in the game, and that comes at the trade-off of a slightly slower time to kill compared to something like a BAR or the M1941 Johnson. And this is another reason a lot of us are scratching our heads. It's like, why does this need a buff? If anything, when I first saw that post about the STG44, I was thinking, oh crap, they're gonna nerf the STG. It turns out they wanted to buff it. So these changes seem to be clearly catering to the pro scene and not the public match community or the 99% of players that play this game. Now, a lot of people would argue that pro players are the ones that play this for a living. They play the most, they play at the highest level possible, and they have the best feel for the gameplay mechanics and overall weapon balance. They have the best feel out of anyone out there. So they should know better and therefore developers should be listening to them and that will benefit the whole community. While I do agree with this to an extent, the big problem with this is they aren't playing the same game that everybody else is playing. They're playing with fewer players on the map, so 4v4. They're playing with the CWL rule set, which has tons of restrictions, so they have a much smaller selection of things and therefore a much smaller range of things that they need to be able to counter, and they have much fewer things that counter them. They play a limited number of maps and game modes, and therefore they have a limited amount of variety in the types of engagements that they're getting into, so the actual gunfights themselves are completely different and much more limited than what we see on public matches. 
And finally, they're playing at an extremely high level against other very high level players. Public matches provide a completely different experience from a pro 4v4 match. As a result, I feel that extra consideration needs to be taken when pro players are asking for a change for something. Developers really need to seriously think, how is this going to affect regular public matches or 99% of the players that play this game? Sometimes it actually aligns very well and what the pro players want actually makes a lot of sense for public matches as well. And therefore there are times where pro players have great ideas that work for both modes. However, in situations like the M1 Garand or the STG44, this is where it starts to harm public matches and basically you're hurting the 99% to make the 1% happy. In those situations where the needs don't align between pro players and public match players, I think the pro players just need to adjust their rule set accordingly. So what I'm saying here is if they don't want the M1 Garand in competitive, and I can see why they wouldn't because there's fewer players on the map, and also you're dealing with really high skilled players that rarely miss shots, the M1 Garand in competitive modes with really high skilled players, yeah, that thing is overpowered. Bring that over to 6v6 though and throw it in the hands of the average Joe, that thing is very difficult to use. You've got a lot more players on the map, so there's a lot more chaos on the map to deal with. You've got a very small clip for that. The M1 Garand is absolutely not overpowered in public matches. So if the pro players don't want it, ban it. Just like everything else that doesn't work for the competitive rule set. S-Mines, for instance, I totally see why they don't want that in competitive rule sets. They ban those. LMGs, also, I see why they don't want those in competitive rule sets. They don't want somebody just sitting and locking down a lane and being able to sit there for ever without ever having to reload and everything. That takes away from the competitive aspect of it, and it takes away from the spectating aspect of it as well. That's something that they absolutely need to consider when they're looking at pro play. Not only does it have to be balanced and highly competitive because there's a lot of money on the line and you don't want a bunch of random weird situations happening, you also have to make it enjoyable to watch. You don't want one single gun like the M1 Garand or the FG42 used by every player out there. That's not nearly as exciting to watch as a meta where there's a couple different styles of rifles, a couple different styles of SMGs, and you see all of them used a little bit, so you have that variety in play styles and roles. So I strongly feel anytime the developers are considering a change for professional play, they should be taking a very good look at how is this going to affect public matches, is this needed for public matches, and honestly I feel if it's going to be harming public matches, they shouldn't be going through with the change. They should always be siding with the 99%, and if it's something that doesn't work well for both modes, the pro players can feel free to ban it. Now one important message I want to throw in at the end here, I see this kind of taken a little bit too far sometimes, is not every single suggestion that the pros want is taken to heart and immediately changed by the developers. I feel like a lot of people think that all it takes is one pro player like Skump to say, you know what, I want this changed. And then the developers are like, yeah, of course, we'll get right on that, we'll make that change. A great example of this is I think the majority of pro players have been on the side of trying to get slightly faster sprint out times. And from what we've seen, those sprint out times are not going to be changing. So for those of you who think that the developers listen to every single whim of pro players, that's not actually the case. However, there are some situations where they're clearly siding with the pro players, and I don't think they should be doing this if it's going to be harming public matches. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's video, and of course, I'd like to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think the opinion of pro players should have a heavier weight than the opinion of the average player out there, the 99% of players out there? Or do you feel that if they really don't want something, they can change their own rules? Once again, just a quick reminder, if you guys want to enter that tournament I talked about earlier, I will leave that link down below. Go and check it out, sign up for free, and you might win $25,000. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.